Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here live in San Francisco. I'm here with Jeff Kelly, my co-host. Jeff's been doing a number of panels today at the GE event, and we're wrapping up the day. Jack Semple is here. Jack is the Senior Managing Director of Cloud at Accenture. Jack, thanks for coming Before on theCUBE. Even my pleasure. So, uh, big event, you know, big GE, making a lot of noise in this industrial internet, but let's start with sort of your role at, uh, at Accenture. Cloud, big, big shoes. <laughs> 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 what, uh, what's cloud all about for well, Accenture? Well, cloud for Accenture is, is, is really um, helping our clients across all layers, from infrastructure to platform to software as a service, all the way up to business processes as a service. Uh, it's a global practice. Uh, we've done uh, well over 4,000 projects uh, with 60% of the Fortune 100. So uh, a lot of dispersed and, and very diverse uh, experiences, whether it's uh, implementing salesforce.com or whether it's actually helping our, our clients put in a private cloud. So I wonder if you could help us calibrate some, some data. So we, we sort of feel like we're, Wikibon and SiliconANGLE, we're talking all the time how we're entering this sort of next wave of cloud. The first one, well, first one I guess was experimental, sort of phase zero, and then mm -hmm. in 2008, 2009, you remember everybody wanted to get get to variable expense as fast as possible, yep. and then the next wave was sort of the shadow IT, and it seems like that really took hold, whether it was SaaS, but even more so infrastructure as a service, mm -hmm. and now you seem to have CIOs actually embracing the cloud. Maybe we're entering the, the next wave, and who knows, maybe this industrial internet is yet another wave, but I wonder if you could talk about where we're at and what your clients are seeing. Sh sure, I, I actually completely agree with the, the, the setup you had there. Um, we are, we've moved from you know why use the cloud to how to use the cloud. Mm -hmm. Uh, certainly, the, the business units have recognized the value of it very early and really pushed. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the kind of theme that we've been using over the last year and to next year will be the hybrid cloud. Uh, we actually launched our Accenture Cloud platform back in April, which is just about that. How to actually start pulling our, our technology brethren and CIOs into a way to manage both their internal legacy and actually how to leverage the, the value of the cloud. Um, the intent there is you know, to be actually you know, a broker or an orchestrator to help them integrate the solution. So um, there is no doubt that uh, our uptick and, and the, the amount of, um, I'll call it, um, implementations, uh, the amount of, uh, I'll call it transformational implementations have ga gathered steam in the last two years versus being kind of very departmental. We're starting to see actually ent enterprise-wide implementations. So talk a little bit more about <coughs> the requirements that you're, you're seeing there. I mean, obviously Amazon's making a lot of noise in the enterprise, but that's just, you know, one arrow in the quiver of, sure. a, of, a, of an enterprise. Talk about what enterprises are asking for and how you're closing that gap for them. It, it really, they're, they're asking, um, uh, really two very different questions. One is mostly, you know, starts off with the cost effectiveness question, um, and then security quickly gets on top of that. So how do I best leverage what is the most price, you know, uh, performance type of solution? So we actually spent a lot of time early on with assessments and, and helping them define a journey, if you will. Uh, the second area though, and it's what's more exciting, I think for most businesses is, you know, how do I create new business opportunities based on, on something like the cloud? Um, you know, in the last session uh, we had here, we were talking about, you know, how do, I, how do we see uh, the use of analytics and data and how that can leverage, you know, into new business operating models. Uh, and one of the major messages I try to give was, we really need this, this trial and error capability you know, folks have got to almost try some things. It's piloting. You know, our friends at Amazon did a great job of getting that up and started. But I think even for the enterprise, we've got to figure out more ways to, to, to help them trial and error new business models quickly. You know, some will work and some won't. And, and if you talk to most, you know, chief executives, they're worried about where the new revenue's coming from, not the cost you know, effect of this. Quarter. Yeah, because it's probably more expensive to rent than it is to buy, at least it from a be. cash flow standpoint. You know, be. CapEx, OpEx games, that's fine. Yep. But, mm -hmm. but, and then, Security, do you agree that for many enterprises, security in the cloud is probably going to be better than, than what they have? Yeah, in fact, I did an interview probably about three months ago where I said the exact same thing. I said, yeah. you know, the, the amount of money being poured into the, the public uh, uh, companies, because they're being attacked, right? They're the, they're the ones who actually have to defend and make sure that they're, they're ready for these attacks from, from outside forces. You know, they're spending more money than any, any enterprise actually can spend on this. Now, you know, that's kind of point one. Point two is we certainly are seeing the tools around security getting more mature. You know, it's the same thing as everything else around cloud, right? All these, op all these offerings are getting more mature and more mature, and the more we use open source, actually, the more the community's helping to do that. So, right. um, we, we do believe that eventually we'll get there. There's obviously, you know, regulations we always have to adhere to, and we, we help our clients through that, but, you know, uh, we're seeing more and more what I call uh, um, back office or business processes being utilized more and more in the public cloud. Although, I, I, I'll, I'll caveat that with, we just got done with a uh, high performance IT study for <laughs> our clients, and private cloud will still be for us, and our, our, our global 2000 clients, still the dominant right. uh, implementation. 
And Jack, you're talking about this sort of what I would call deeper business integration, new opportunities. Jeff, you were hanging out today with, uh, let's see, the likes of Paul Moritz and, and Werner Vogels, so, so Werner Vogel, so all this cloud, you know, brain matter must have uh, seeped through to you. What are you <laughs> yeah. <thinking> about? <laughs> well, certainly, uh, I think you know, uh, you know, GE and and Pivotal and Amazon and Accenture are really focusing. The cloud is going to play a pivotal role, if no pun intended, in the industrial internet. Um, you know, the industrial cloud is the, is the hashtag GE is using here for this event. Um, so I think clearly, it, it, to really leverage the industrial internet, you can't do that without cloud. It's just not possible right. uh, because you're crossing geographic boundaries, you're crossing um, organizational boundaries, and, and data by its, but you know, but just by the very nature of the data we're dealing with, it's not going to live in a central uh, single location inside the firewall, but um, so could you help us understand maybe a little bit more about the role specifically cloud plays? I mean, because we hear a lot about uh, three things that we're hearing a lot about today, cloud, Hadoop, mm -hmm. and real-time analytics. Mm -hmm. Help put that into perspective for our audience, kind of where those three, do they intersect? Where do they intersect? How do they, how do they cooperate to, to enable this industrial internet? Yeah, I, I think there's, uh, th th again, there's two angles to this. For first is, you know, and, and, and it was mentioned a lot during the opening ceremony, or opening uh, comments, that, you know, uh, independence of, of solution is important. So so the concept of, of actually having, um, you know, whether it's Amazon up front, you may use another public provider tomorrow, you may use a different, piv a different uh, private provider later on, that independence is important, and we have to design to that. So we're, we're designing to, to standards, if you will, hopefully open standards. I, I think the second thing that uh, that we see is is that um, you know we just did our, our tech vision and Paul probably mentioned it earlier, but you know we see every business become a digital business, and we actually see the, the the confluence of not just analytics with cloud, but with social, with mobility. All these things are are coming together because what what CIO or CEO for that matter is going to say? Just tell me about cloud without talking about how that enables other things to make my business better. So, so we do see a, a, a convergence of that. Um, you know, uh, I mentioned in, in the last uh, um, discussion round, you know, I think what we're trying to do here with, with GE, with Pivotal, uh, and, and with Amazon is to actually have purpose-built solutions. So pre-integrated, we understand the business uh, case, the business results that we expect, we can actually offer them with confidence. And I think that's part of what, what this is, because there are all kinds of solutions out there you know, bits and pieces. It's it's, it's it's how do we how do we integrate those solutions so that we can actually to get to a business result, and uh, and that's where a lot of Accenture's focus is going to be over the next few years around what we call business services mm -hmm. and having an end-to-end -end perspective on it. Is that solution in an in industrial cloud, and and what does that look like? Uh, it, it, well, I think it all depends on the requirements. <laughs> I'm sorry to be that that. that <laughs> no, that you're right. It, but, it comes but from the customer. But but, but, but the but, but the answer. But is let's it, generalize it, if we can. But but, but, but if you can, you know, if you turn around and said that, you know, I, I, I'm in the insurance industry and I want to do claims, right? You know. Is there a reason why today they've got legacy systems that you know someone sitting in the back office? You know, the ultimate where we'd like to get to is, is claims as a service, right? And making sure that the infrastructure that's behind that that supports that is in that that you know I can I can charge you by the claim. You do mm -hmm. one, I'll charge you for one. You charge ten thousand, I'll charge you for ten thousand. You know, that way you can again trial and error. <laughs> right. Is this the business you want to be in? Admittedly, we got a long way to go to get all there, but you know, part of what Accenture is doing is is we are pre-integrating that in, in this Accenture Cloud platform to try and say these are certain solutions we're we're confident in that an enterprise, global two thousand enterprise, can take take to their customers with with confidence. So as it relates to the industrial <coughs> internet, you've got machines, you've got sensors, you're processing data locally, you're 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 Absolutely. distributing data uh, up into the cloud, you're doing analytics, so. Do I build that or do I buy that? <laughs> 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 I, so, so first, what I call Accenture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not exactly. Um, uh, w what I would say I is, is in the end, you will probably want to buy a majority of it. Um, and, and one of the, the items that I think is, is, is key for this entire area, and, and I think we talked briefly about this earlier, was that you know the skill sets to do all these new technologies is limited. Mm. So more and more, again, we want to have purpose solutions that we can say, okay, you can buy this component. Now, if you want to do the, you know, the, the customization to make that yours or that perspective, that's the thing in-house you need to do, right? You need to big. I, I certainly see CIOs needing to move from a builder to a their own broker, right? How do I become the advisor to my business units to say, here's the best solutions for you? So that's where I see us moving. So talk 
more about, because uh, as your customers change, your business changes. Talk Absolutely. more about how the cloud has changed your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I'd say broadly, it depends on which area. Um, it's been a big opportunity us, for us in the infrastructure area because it is a transformation discussion. Um, you know, we generally are not ones that hold a lot of infrastructure. So, with the right. ability to, to to rent or lease, as you say, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. uh, it, it offers a freedom for us to to actually operate and and, and operate on a newer, um, I'll call it capability. So that's been actually a very 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 positive for us. I also see it as an advantage for us in the platform as a service a arena. Why? Because you know all those things have been sitting in legacy for a long time. Are actually now based on the, the, the cost benefit analysis. Now can actually start being looked at to be moved off a of legacy into a new architecture. And by the way, that new architecture offers you know all the elasticity, et cetera, that you didn't have before. Um, not saying everything will go. By the way, uh, we do expect quite a bit to stay on mainframe, and things will stay. But but we see it as another opportunity of. of but the infrastructure was a big barrier to moving a lot of that stuff. Is correct. What you're correct. It uh, wasn't uh, just the fact that it was running on COBOL and you had to freeze the code and move yeah. it. There was an infrastructure barrier. Right. Correct. So, so do you yeah. see us moving to a scenario where enterprises only keep the infrastructure in house that they really have to keep in house for either uh, regulatory reasons or. Um, you know, for other other compliance related reasons, and basically moving everything else into the cloud to consume as a service. Is that where we're going? And the only ones that are going to have really you know complex internal operations are the big Googles of the world who run you know going to run their own. I, I don't think we'll ever quite get to that full full area because because again, some legacy will never go. Two, you know, there I there are certain companies that that will have the mindset that even though it, it could be shared, components will be shared, but but there are things that they just want to say, you know, give me what I can, and, and that's where we're spending a lot of time actually putting mm. on-prem private cloud solutions in for them, right? So they can actually take advantage of some of the, and I'll call it some of the elasticity, <laughs> um, but but the the automation and all the, the other capabilities around it. So, I, I, you know, in the perfect world you get there, but you know, when we when I when we did our high performance IT review, like I said, private cloud is still a very main component now, all the way out into 2020. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking overnight. This is going to happen. It's gonna it's gonna be a journey. Um, you know, and, and I, I think Paul said it before, I don't know if he said it before, but he said it to me before is, you know, there are still mainframes out there. Remember we all said client server would replace the mainframe? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to have the same type of journey. Right, well as our CTO David Floyer says, technologies don't really go away. They'll, they start <laughs> to fade away a little bit, but there's, you know, there's still mainframes, there's still going to be all sorts of technology out there for Correct. for a long time ahead. So it's certainly, Correct. as we talked about in the panel, you have to, have to manage these heterogeneous environments, both modern technologies, cloud, internal, Mainframes, it's really, uh, it's we're trying to simplify, but it's still a very complex environment. It, it is, and which is why you know, I think what we call service integration is key. So offering services is, is going to end up being key, because that will normalize at least up to the business units, if you will, what we're offering. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said pre-repurposed pre or, or purposed solutions make a lot of sense. So you talked about you're excited about these these new business capabilities that are being enabled as a result of the cloud. What are some of the things, some examples you can give us that are that are most exciting to you? Well, I, I, you know, th they come in all all different flavors. Uh, you know, the ones that I'll, uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll we've been involved in, or we've been involved with some oil and gas companies where they're actually, you know, they're always bringing in new companies and, and bringing them into the fold, if you will, and mm -hmm. then selling them. You know, bringing them, instead of bringing them into the big legacy system that can take you know, nine to 12 months, well, guess what? Using cloud technologies, whether no matter what part of the stack, can take three months. You know, so all of a sudden, you're able to integrate more quickly and have, you know, basically, I'll call it the big pipe to the, to the big RP in the sky, ERP in the sky. Right. Um, so just timing-wise there, you know, we're seeing things with API management that are very impressive, where, you know, folks are actually starting to publish their APIs out. You know, you've seen quite a bit with the, with the car manufacturers and what they're enabling. Mm -hmm. So now you have these, you know, free markets are going out and saying, okay, I can rent my car, you know, by the hour, that it's, it's my car, not a rental shop. So those are the kind of things that we see that are just, you know, I don't think we know exactly everything we're going to see, but it certainly is unleashing capabilities that, that, guess what, that was in your legacy capability. And you can get new revenue and value out of it. Okay, well listen Jack, really appreciate you coming by and uh, sure. sharing your insights and uh, good luck with the initiative. We're very impressed with what you guys are doing. Uh, partnership is a big theme and uh, Absolutely. congratulations on the progress and we'll be watching for more. Thank you, it's a pleasure. All right, keep it right there everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from San Francisco. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back.